the UTSA Roadrunners, and, of course, Jeff Trailer. Magnificent job last year. By the way, anybody that wants to know, I will be posting these. I've gotten a lot of questions on Twitter and whatnot about where they can get these spreadsheets. These are just my personal notes, spreadsheets, but I'm going to post them on the website, winningcureseverything.com. So go ahead and make sure you bookmark the website and check frequently. I'm going to post them up, and I'll let you guys know on the show when they are posted. Uh, But I might actually start sending out these as images on Twitter so that everybody can have them if they want them. So uh, I do appreciate you guys asking, for sure. UTSA went 12-2 and last year, lost the bowl game. Uh, if you look at the post-game win expectancy for them last season, uh, this was closer to like a 9-4 and team, uh, 9.18 and 3.82. They did win the Conference USA Championship game. It was in their house in the Alamo Dome against Western Kentucky. Uh, big losses. Uh, left tacker Spencer Buford. Uh, the defensive end, Lorenzo Dantzler, uh, Charles Wiley, the linebacker, Tariq Woolen, the cornerback, of course, ran a ridiculous time that was later found out to not be totally accurate, but he he was still fast. And then, of course, the running back, Sincere McCormick, which I was really worried was going to be a big part of their rebuilding this year. Their, their returning production is 72%. That's number 34 in the country, so it's pretty good. And the offense brings back 82%, which is awesome. Uh, you look at some of these numbers, for the most part, Fairly average, but when it comes to PPA per drive, number 28 in the country, that was really good. Number 11 passing success rate in the country, which if you look at Frank Harris and you think that he is just a running quarterback, etc., that is not the case. He is actually a very, very good quarterback. So, looking at this from the offensive side of the ball, uh, they lost offensive coordinator Barry Lunny Jr. He went over to Illinois with uh, Brett Bielema. They should remain good. Under the coast, he's Will Stein and Matt Maddox. I believe the trailer's got a lot of faith in these guys. And those two have a lot to work with here. I don't know which one of them's going to be calling plays. I was not able to find any of the notes anywhere. If any of you UT, uh, UTSA fans want to toss those out to me, I would love to know who's actually calling the plays. Uh, as good as Sincere McCormick was, the offense was still number 72 in rushing success rate last year. That's definitely not great. Uh, And while I said that that's the one that I was worried about you losing because he was a workhorse last year, they do get Arkansas running back Traylon Smith transferring in. Now, his numbers at Arkansas last year were not great. He had to deal with injuries, etc. But Smith is a really talented running back, and I think he's going to be awesome in this offense. Frank Harris, I said, of course, returns along with wide receiver Zachary Franklin. Four seniors on the offensive line. and the transfer left uh, left tackle Payne Abair from Northwestern is coming in. I think he could be an immediate starter as well. Uh, this offense looks like it's going to be just fine. Just fine. At number 28 in PBA per drive. I don't know how replicable that is this season, especially losing your offensive coordinator and uh, McCormick at running back, but they got the pieces in place to be able to do the same thing that they've been doing. Uh, the schedule is a little bit more difficult for sure, especially early on, but... Yeah, this is still going to be a good football team for sure. Defense, co-DC Rod Wright left for a job with Miami. So the defense now solely on Jess Lepp. Uh, Defense, not the reason that they won 12 games last year, obviously. You look at some of those numbers. PPA per drive, they were number 67, so they basically had to outscore a lot of teams. Uh, When you look at the rushing success rate, they were pretty good there. Pretty good there along the front lines, number 52 in that spot. But passing success, they were number 90. Uh, That's not good. And obviously, when you play Western Kentucky two times with Bailey Zapp and and that bunch, Zach Kitley's offense, yeah, it's going to hurt your passing success rate. But that was not the only issue that they had last year. Uh, Explosive play rate, number 88, that's not good. Uh, They don't need to allow that much this year. They've got a lot of talented guys as far as the secondary is concerned. Uh, No defensive linemen returning with over 358 snaps, which, again, sounds like a lot, but there's not a lot of these guys coming in. They do have six guys with 190 to 358 snaps, so they they do have some experience. This unit can produce better this year. I wonder if any philosophical change on the offense is going to have an immediate impact on the defense. I'm very curious about that. Uh, Top players, of course, Traylon Smith, I brought him up. Frank Harris, Zachary Franklin, uh, the right tackle, Makai Hart, uh, the safety, Rashad Wisdom, and the linebacker, Trevor Harmonson. Those are guys to look out for. Keys to the season. Frank Harris, number eight in passing efficiency, number 11 success rate. Um, I, you got to ask about the offensive coordinator. Like, I, do you miss Barry Lenny that much? 
Losing four to the front seven on defense could sting. There is obvious talent there. Jeff Trailer has loaded this cupboard. Um, what will leadership changes on both sides of the ball mean? That's another question. Well, while you got a bunch of these same players coming back, do they match the same ideas that the coaches had, that the leadership had before those coordinators? Team was number 21 in net points per drive and number 55 in PPA margin. Uh, if the defense can step up, this can legitimately be a top 25 caliber team and not just in the G5 or whatever. This can be one of the premier teams in the country if you can get the defense to play at an above average level because this offense is stacked with talent. So the defense has talent too, but we got to see it before we do anything else. So uh, my record for them, by the way, let me pull that back up. Uh, I have them 9-3. and three. I've got losses at UAB. I've got a loss to Houston, and I've got a loss uh, at Texas. I've got them beating Army and then beating everybody else in Conference USA. So I think I think they're still going to be really, really good. It just may not be the same, you know, 12-1 and one that they were heading into a bowl game last season. Still going to be really good, though. Still going to be really good. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.